Hello and welcome to the NIC Board of Trustees special meeting here on August 26th. I appreciate everyone that could be here. I believe we have a flag in the corner, so I don't, it's not on our agenda, but I'm going to start our meeting off with the Pledge of Allegiance like we normally do. I pledge allegiance. Thank you for joining me in that. There are certain days where that pledge seems to take a little more significance. I'm a career military man and still serving. And right now we've got some of my brothers and sisters in harm's way in Afghanistan. And we've just had a tremendous loss as many of you may be following the news. I would encourage you to keep all those people in your prayers, please. It's uh, We've paid a high price in Afghanistan and and uh, Iraq, and uh, it's unfortunate we're still spilling blood over there. Mr. Chair? Y yes, Christy. I just wanted to acknowledge we have a large number of former board members in the audience tonight. I'd like to thank them for attending, and our Chamber of Commerce officials and our, our foundation officials. Thank you all for coming. Christy, I can barely hear you. It's kind of oh, a mumble. Okay, I'm going to get closer. Yeah. We have a number of former trustees in the audience, uh, Chamber of Commerce officials, Foundation officials. I just want to thank all of you for coming. All right. <clears throat> we'll convene a call to order this meeting. We do have a quorum. Uh, Mr. Lyons, did you want to take attendance? Uh, certainly. Trustee Van, Chair Banducci is here. Uh, yes. Trustee Barnes is here. Trustee Howard is here. Trustee McKinsey is here. And Trustee Wood is here. So it looks like all members are here. Thank you very much. First item under new business is the discussion regarding uh, the mask mandate. Uh, Mr. Lyons, if you would please, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I think there's been a bit of confusion over the the authority to um, to uh, uh, manage the the uh, college, and in this case, uh, with the mask mandates or any other protocols. Historically, the the responsibility to uh, deal with and be responsible for the day-to-day -day operations, including the health safety of students and staff is an administrative function, and that has been with the president. And that continues today. Now, I recognize that Idaho, uh, the Idaho legislature passed a statute recently that is Idaho Code 3321-45. That statute does provide for for um, the measures and procedures to prevent the spread of contagious or infectious diseases, that, that uh, and any um, measures to to address those, including closing bu buildings, campuses, other measures, which presumably would include mask, uh, that that sort of thing. Um, that is would now be the authority of the board of trustees. But when you read the statute, I think it becomes apparent that before the Board of Trustees can have that authority, they must, as required by statute, they must adopt a policy to address the measures and procedures to, uh, to uh, address the, the prevention of contagious diseases. So um, until the Board does that, this is still an operating decision. And I think that's what some of the confusion has been in this community, because I've heard that from a number of people. I've seen people inquire about it. Um, this is a policy that the Board of Trustees must adopt by statute. And there, is a, there are certain things that have to happen before they adopt it. Once it is adopted, then this authority will rest with the Board of Trustees. So I hope that clears up any confusion. 
Um, and that's basically all I have, unless any trustee has questions. Are there any questions for Mr. Lyons? Yes, Trustee Banducci, or Chairman Banducci. Uh, uh, Trustee Wood, please. Could you, uh, Mr. Lyon, could you college policy on policy development? Well, uh, the, the Board of Trustees has adopted a policy on how policies are developed. It is, um, um, it does uh, provide for the input of the administration, input of constituent groups represented through the Senate, uh, the ultimate authority uh, for policies to be enacted is the Board of Trustees, but the policy on policies, if you will, does have a process and procedures with timelines on that. And, and Mr. Chair, one follow-up. Uh, Mr. Lyons, could you explain in the state code that you uh, alluded to, 33-2145, the, um, the portion on conferring with uh, the health district? Yes, yeah, so the, the, the um, statute that I referenced earlier that would give the authority for measures and procedures to prevent uh, contagious or infectious diseases, or at least to deal with it, does require that the, that the policy that is developed must be done in consultation with the local health, health authority, in this case, Panhandle Health District. I have a question. Trustee McKenzie. How soon is must? How soon is what? If, it, if the statute says must, how long do we have to do it, to adopt a policy? I would assume that it puts a responsibility on the board, but there is no timetable on that. Mr. Chair. Trustee Howard. Oh. Mr. Lyons, um, the question was just put to you about whether or not there is some definition of must in the statute. If the word must is used, does that mean that you have to ignore all of the existing policies in order to do it, or you must do it within the context of existing policies? No, I would assume not. The, the, the procedures or the policy, uh, the statute does provide for certain things uh, that must be done to adopt it. It, does, it is, does not have great detail in it, however, the, the statute. Mr. Lyons, question? Trustee McKenzie. If this board were to review a decision by the president, would that fall under the category of relationship with the office of the president? Uh, would, would you state that one more time, please? If this board is clarifying the relationship of operating decisions that the president has, does that fall under the category of relationship with the office of the president? I'm not sure I understand the question. Uh, if the question is, is if the board, um, I, I ask, is the question, can the board undo the operating decision of the president? No. Oh. The question is, if the board puts forth a policy that clarifies the relationship of the president and operating decisions, is that a, under the category of relationship with the office of the president? Uh, and, and again, I'm not I'm sure I, un, I understand. If the board it's adopts, clarifying the relationship of the two entities, sir. That's how I look at it. If the board adopts the policy, then the authority for the measures regarding infectious disease rests with the board and not the office of the president. So. Presumably, the board could delegate some part of that at some point um, and subject to review, but that would be a matter of policy or procedure. So it is clarifying the relationship of the authority. With respect to this issue of... So uh, I shall read this statement. The adoption, deletion, or revision of policies, this is according to 2.0104, 
and procedures affecting the internal administration of the Board of Trustees and or its relationship with the Office of the President is not subject to comment by either the Office of the President or the College Senate. I see what you're saying, what you're saying. Yeah. I, um... The adoption and deletion and revision of these policies and procedures is reserved exclusively to the Board of Trustees. Okay, I, uh, Trustee, uh, um, um, I would uh, suggest that that's, that that's an interpretation, but it seems to me that the, the uh, measures to deal with, um, uh, to stop the spread of infectious and contagious diseases affects the, the in institution as a whole, including students and staff. So. I think it's more than just the relationship between well, the board. Well, it's definitely referring to authority, sir, but I would say it's referring to the relationship. Mr. Chair. Just a second. I'm trying to let Mr. Lyons and Trustee McKenzie finish the, the discussion, the dialogue here. Yeah, and, and I have to confess, I, I have some difficulty hearing the question down at this end, so. Quite frankly, I'm having a hard time hearing everything. I, mean, I know I have lost some of my hearing this quarter of the VA, but is it possible to get a monitor? Yeah, here we, it's us? hard to hear. I mean, I'm struggling. I was almost going to lean over to you and ask if you can hear because I can't hear. I got hearing aids. Yeah, you got your hearing aids up. Yeah, I, I know. It's uh, this is really tough. Wow, right? a bunch of old men. I think they're <laughs> going to work on uh, on volume. Can you folks out there hear us? Yes, no, because we can't. I can't, we can't hear. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's, you know, I'm trying to adjust and you know, get where I can get. Maybe make sure I can hear you, but I'm not hearing the others. No touching. <laughs> As much as you guys can speak up, we can only amplify so much. I understand. We'll, we'll do what we can. I'm, I'm trying to adjust my speaker, and I'm moving it. Keep moving in my chair. I'll have these speakers. <clears throat> also, I just want to take your mask off when you're talking. Oh, that's probably better. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah take your There's mask off when you're talking. At least, okay. It, you just right. can't hear it, Mr. Chairman. Who's talking to me? me. Mark. Mark. Yeah. Oh, oh. So, yes. Okay. So, um, uh, to uh, I think what I uh, to address what I think was is Trustee McKenzie's uh, question. Um, I, I I think the the uh, foundation of the question is does this policy that the board would consider uh, as uh, under the the statute thirty three twenty one forty five is that an, an, a policy that would affect the internal administration of the Board of Trustees and or its relationship with the president that is, that, that is contemplated in the policy on policies, which is 2.01.04? And, I, and I, I think I have to say my interpretation is that it would not. It really, the policy to control or stop the spread of infectious diseases would become the the authority uh, of the board, but that would be a policy that affects the institution as a whole and is not pointed toward uh, the relationship with the president or the internal governance of the board of trustees. So, so I I just have to be uh, clear on that. I think that's that's what the in, the intention of the exception on the policy on policies is to address things that, that relate solely to the Board of Trustees, relating to meetings or, or the, the direct relationship between the president's office and the board, the sorts of things that do not affect the institution, the staff and students as a whole. In front of each of the trustees, or in your board book, or however you had, I think were, some of what was here, I'd printed some off, but you should have, 
policy, it should be labeled in red in the left hand side, just below the word policy revision one. And you should have a second one that in the left hand corner under policy is labeled revision two in red. And those would be the two documents that we'll be looking at this evening. I know if, that- If I may, Trustee Benduction. <clears throat> give me just one second, please. Um, those documents have been worked on by Trustee McKenzie. Um, we'd received an email and some input regarding this document from the Panhandle Health District, uh, Catherine Hoyer. I know that President McLennan has been involved in working on that too. So this, and I'm not sure who else may have looked at it. So there's, there have been uh, some different sets of eyes in trying to get to where we're at. My understanding is there's been a lot of uh, iterations of this and uh, what we have now, it looks a lot simpler and cleaner. I will say that from where we started. Um, in closing of our prior conversation with Mark Lyons and me, could we take a vote on if we see it's into your, into your speaker and try it again. Sorry. In closing uh, with Mark Lyons and my conversation, can we take a vote with us board of trustees to see if it, uh, this revision needs, uh, if it's under the category of relationship with the office of the president? Well, I guess if the if this question is going to come down to if we need to do a vote now, and I don't know if we need to do that now or after we complete this discussion about the, the policy and the revisions itself, because I have a couple of things that, that I will add to the discourse, and I was kind of holding off. Um, so you're looking for just an interpretation of the applicability of this policy and how it applies in the relationship between the board and the administration, i.e. the president of uh, the office of the president of the college. Well, people are saying that we cannot update this policy. And that's not what Mark's saying. I don't interpret that, but that's what Christy and other people. I would like a vote of this board to acknowledge that we have the opportunity to change this policy. We are the final say on this policy. Our statement to the accreditation response even said this board is the final authority on policy. Mr. Chair. Right. Okay, that's, I'm hearing what you're saying. I, I, I guess I'll. Mr. Chair. Just a moment, Trustee Wood, please. Um, along that lines, and I guess a couple thoughts, then I guess I'll add my now and then I'll let uh, Trustee Wood, uh, since I haven't added anything to the dialogue yet of the conversation. One is the state legislature has passed this statute. We have been tasked with Paul, with producing a policy, with passing a policy, with approving a policy, creating a policy, and to accept that uh, the responsibility for this this uh, for this task. And so the question in my mind would be: How long do we defer doing our duty, doing our responsibility, doing what, what's expected of us, what, what's required of us? And so it, the more we delay, I think the the, the, the more we're behind in, in what we're supposed to be doing. The second thing is. Sometimes this board finds that we have to make adjustments because of the nature of things, whether it's, you know, saying, oh, we don't need a second reading because um, maybe uh, Beth Ann Fuller needs a, needs a decision right now for the Head Start or, or a policy because of the sense, sensitivity of the nature or the urgency of it. We rush it through and then we review it later. We've even offered to do that with the board conduct policy again. We've there's times where we move expeditiously when it seems prudent and when it seems appropriate. And normally when we do such a thing, we agree to circle back around and review it. This would be a sort of document that I think as the events on the ground unfold and, 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 this, and the situation is very fluid and dynamic that we'd probably have to review this thing again at the next meeting or next couple of meetings just to make sure it's, it's where we want it uh, in, in the balance between the administration and the, and the board. And um, as we make decisions as to what we need to do or, or not to uh, protect the students on this campus. So we have the ability to, to bypass or to expedite or to speed up. And, and normally all that takes is a, is a motion and a second and a vote. So I think we're well within our, our reasonable standards of conduct and, and how we follow our policies to carefully and selectively and, and infrequently choose to um, make a, a, a decision and, and speed up the timeline on it. 
So I will say, I don't think we're out of bounds if we do choose to address this policy tonight and initiate action on it. So that's, that's my opinion. I, we've done it plenty of times. I've been on the board for then I make almost that. nine years. Oh, Mr. Chair, am I allowed? Just a second. Yeah, you're, you're coming next. And then I'm gonna go back to Trustee McKenzie. So, and don't forget, I had a comment also. You did also, yes, sir, sorry. Uh, Trustee Wood. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, just to clarify uh, Trustee McKenzie's statement, there is no one on this board suggesting the board doesn't have final authority on policy. We certainly do. What I have advocated for all along is we follow the proper process and the process means we get input from our constituent groups as our policy on policy demands. We follow the state law on the recent uh, development of policy, particularly for communicable disease. Christy, stay up to your mic. Nice. I, I am, I think, it, I, think I lost, I lost part of that. Sorry. Uh, so, sorry. That has been what I have tried to push forward through email because Trustee McKenzie started this through an email draft, a home computer version of policy, which is not how we develop policy. I have cautioned this board. I continue to caution the board. We've got time, do this right, bring the constituent groups in. There's, this is not an emergency. We had a mass made it on campus for a full year and the president has asked for a two week mask mandate. So it, it is not that the board won't make a decision. We need to follow proper process and whatever we do should withstand uh, legal scrutiny so that we don't bring any kind of a lawsuit upon the college. That has been my position all along, not that the trustees cannot pass policy. Trustee McKenzie, just a moment. And I've still got President McClendon too. <clears throat> Christy, I'll, I will point out one thing. The decision was made the weekend prior to the start of classes the drop ad started on the 23rd, ends on Sunday the 29th. So as students are making decisions about whether they're going to attend NIC, and we've received enough emails in our NIC email, which you've seen, and there's been a number, number of which are from kids and adults and students and one father and daughter that have told us, I have withdrawn from NIC. I am not coming to NIC. I will come, but I'm coming. We have one, Dr. Burns has heard the voicemail on this with about a daughter. Where, and I don't know who did it, but they were telling them, hold on, we're waiting to see how this goes. I'm not gonna withdraw you yet. So we've got people advising that way on the campus, waiting to see basically how this meeting unfolded. And so it is critical and we are in a very unique timeline because of the drop ad and people trying to either get in or get out of classes or make that decision whether they're going to attend this semester. And already we're losing people and we've already been threatened with at least one lawsuit. We've, one potential lawsuit. We've had, so I would tell you there is a sense of urgency and that this is a time, uh, an issue of timeliness that we have to address. Uh, our boxes are filling up with, with, uh, with emails and with complaints and obviously some in support too. I uh, don't mean to, 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 not, to not state that also, but this is something we've got to deal with. Trustee McKenzie. And just to clarify, Christy said the president uh, requested, it was not requested, and people are therefore claiming illegal and are threatening to sue this college, like we've already seen in one email. And there is an operating decision that affords students zero exceptions. Now, I have seen historically during the last man mass mandate, staff got ex extraordinary accommodations, including a sheet, a shower curtain around them, Stat, uh, trustees are afforded exemptions. So it is incredibly important to me when I'm hearing that these students are being escorted off campus due to police, that I don't know how you cannot say that this is not time sensitive. People have made decisions. I, people are emailing this board saying, I've looked at the laws of Idaho I'm under the impression this decision was left up to the Board of Trustees. Okay. Um, President McLennan, sir. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, <clears throat> a couple of things. Where I wanted to jump in at the way back in the stream of this conversation was on the two handouts the board members have. One is in, um, entitled, I think it's labeled Revision 1, and the other is Revision 2. Revision one re 
reflects the input that uh, you are receiving from the administration on this policy. Um, done rather hastily, but I think quality time was spent on it yesterday afternoon. The second uh, revision too is contains the revisions from the first document and adds in Trustee McKenzie's uh, 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 language on uh, a biweekly report of uh, on the issue he just referenced around uh, accommodations or exemptions. Um, uh, one of the reasons it got a lot smaller is uh, much of what was in the original document was procedural, as I do believe the third paragraph is now uh, procedural as well. And the other thing I wanted to say, um, I think it's been said, but I, I think you need to hear it from me as well. And this is in the context of accreditation and the investigation uh, that we responded to in June and the subsequent letter we received from the Northwest Commission on Colleges and Universities, accepting that report uh, with, the, uh, with the notation of a follow-up ad hoc report due by August 31, 2022 that requires us to um, provide evidence of our ongoing, uh, how we're addressing eligibility requirement requirement nine, which is uh, entitled board governance. And I, I just, um, there's nothing in the state law, 33-2145, that would compel the board to forego uh, the policy development process that it has developed in, in policy. So in the context of uh, the board commitment to follow its policies, and the need to demonstrate, fulfill that commitment through and provide evidence to the Northwest Commission on Colleges and Universities. I, I really do think, um, as with all policy development, that it's in the board's interest and it's in the college's interest uh, to do that according to established process. That's all I have, thank you. Trustee Howard. Um, this conversation is ranging far and wide, but I guess I want to uh, address a couple of things. When I read Idaho Code 332145, which is the <clears throat> new um, provisions that we're looking at, it says that the Board of Trustees must adopt a policy for measures and procedures to prevent the spread of contagious or infectious disease to prevent the spread of contagious or infectious disease. Quite honestly, I look at this policies in either one of them and they don't really have any provisions to preventing it other than allowing the administration to do its job. There is no emergency here. Nobody has suggested there is an emergency except in this board's discussions. In this particular meeting, contrary to almost every other board meeting I've been involved in, at the sole choice, I guess, of the chair, there's been no public comment allowed. No public comment. There's, I had no opportunity to review before tonight any of these um, uh, proposals other than some drafts that don't even look like what, were, what have been provided to me tonight. Um, this was noticed as a action item, which means that we didn't have to go through a second reading in violation of our policies of trying to give an opportunity for the public, for the, for the faculty, for the students to make comment on specific policy changes. So what we've done with this process tonight is to ramrod through or attempt to ramrod through language that nobody else gets an opportunity to review. There's been suggestions that Panhandle Health had an opportunity to review this, but I have not had an opportunity as a trustee to review anything that the Panhandle Health reviewed or to discuss with them, which I think is my obligation, their concerns or my concerns about certain parts of this language. When the statute says that the policy must be uh, adopted in consultation with the district, that means the trustees, not one trustee, not two trustees, but all of the trustees. None of that has been done. We've heard suggestions that there have been 
complaints by one or two people that they may withdraw from our faculty or from our student body. I apologize for that. I'm sorry to hear that. But I've had a lot of conversations of people congratulating us in the past for the kinds of uh, protocols that have been adopted in order to avoid outbreaks on this campus. People have been very, very proud in this community and reflected it to me about the kinds of activity. Please, I, I want to have this discussion in a civil way because I think it's important for all of us. But we cannot, as a board, make a decision based upon anecdotal stories. We can't do that because there's always anecdotal stories. I can give you anecdotal stories about people who are so very proud of us, and there are anecdotal stories about people who are upset about something. We have to make our decisions based upon what we feel is best for the institution, for the faculty and staff as a whole. It doesn't mean we don't listen to the anecdotal stories. It just means that they can't drive our decision. I, I, I did not have any opportunity, no request from Trustee McKenzie or anybody else to participate in putting together this policy. Um, I can tell you just in looking at it, I've got some changes I would make now, but we need time in order to develop an appropriate policy. Then state your changes. Excuse me. We have time now. Excuse hold me. on, hold on, hold on. Please, sir. sir. Please, sir. Sir. What I think we need to do in order to make sure that we get this right is to have a, a public hearing, have Panhandle Health come in, have us as trustees, all of us, an opportunity to ask them what their concerns might be, what their suggestions might be about an appropriate protocol and to put into this policy. Um, we need to have an opportunity for public comment about it so that we get a better role, a better idea of what the public as a whole understands, give the public an opportunity to review whatever is being proposed so that they can make a reason to comment on it. This uh, is an important step. And what I don't wanna see quite frankly is what I think is an attempt to push through a policy avoiding all of the checks and balances that we have built into our, into our policies here at the college, which is a governance issue that is being examined by the accreditation folks. That the first opportunity we have after sending them a note saying, we know what our, our job is, and it's to make sure that we pay attention to our constituents, to the faculty and staff, and there's a protocol, there's a method by which they can voice their concerns, and we're shutting all that down. I see this as being a terrible example of us not following through on our obligation, word and commitment to the uh, accreditation folks. This rapid um, move, I think is, is replete with uh, potential problems. And, uh, and I'm really quite frankly disappointed that we're looking at it in such an abbreviated fashion. Sir. We have a meeting people. Please, whether you like- I got work to do after this still. Whether you like or disagree what's said, Keep it to yourself, please. I don't need you to clap for me. I don't need you to clap for Ken. It's not appropriate. I, I will say two things and then I'll pass on. First off, we've had a number of meetings where there was no public comment. And oftentimes that was at the suggestion and recommendation of our attorney, Mark Lyons. So the, I, I don't appreciate that being pinned on me initially. Uh, I did make the call on this one, but there, we, this is not the first time we've had several and Mark has made that call. And, and I think he can attest to that. He's advised me that way on a couple of occasions because of the, the nature of the meetings. Secondly, can we accommodate you significantly? We give you not just emails on your NIC email. You're the only one who we personally who send your personal email, all the communications. And, and I know you're splitting time between here and New Mexico and it's been a challenge. I appreciate you being here. I know you had to come back from New Mexico for the meeting, but getting to you is hard. That's why we have so few meetings. I take a lot of criticism but I'm gonna thank Shannon for her yeoman's effort 
ask her what a challenge it is to try to find all five of us. And even at Christie's urging a couple of times to go forward without all five, as long as we have a quorum, I have resisted that because of the sensitivity, the significance, and the importance of the different issues that we've encountered and are dealing with over the last several months. So I have refrained from having any meeting unless all five of us can be physically present. And this was an example of when you specifically said you wanted to be here physically. So this is where we came up with this date today, Thursday the 26th. It was the one date we could do. It gave you time to get back from New Mexico. So we are trying to provide things to you electronically. If you're not feeling you're getting adequate time, I'm sorry for that. That's unfortunate. But, but we do accommodate you in, even in a different way with the emails than we do any other trustee. We don't send to anybody else's personal emails. We've tried to avoid getting anything out to personal emails and keep everything within the scope of the NIC email system. And, and there are several reasons for that. Um, that's all I'm going to say. Mr. Chair. Trustee McKenzie. I am next. Um, everyone needs a voice in this community. All trustees, even those out of town who don't want to be on Zoom and delay a couple of days to be in presence, deserve that right as well, including students who also can possess a health condition and a learning dis disability at the same time. I am more than happy to wear my mask, mandated or not mandated. This is not about masks. This is about empowering voices that have no exceptions on campus when other constituent groups are allowed. Think about that. Trustees are allowed an exemption. Staff are allowed reason more than um, reasonable accommodations, but not students. This is a crisis. We, we, the drop date is Sunday, and people don't even want to have the 31st meeting. What are these students? This is their only opportunity, and they have voiced their concern and concern and and how many d votes are we going to delay? We've delayed the president's contract from August 4th upon request of Christie, which I voted for out of respect for Christie. We, we, now we're going to delay this update of the mass policy when the statute say must adopt. And this is strict, clearly a 2.014 compliant because it's in the relationship of the, um, between the board and the president. You may do this and we may review it. That is the relationship between the board and the president. I know it's hard not to draft policy out in the open. I know that's a fully new concept with our prior board members from my prior experience and evaluation of prior boards and conversations, which I am willing to back up. So this is your opportunity to provide input. I cannot speak to you because I already talked to Todd about this. If I get your inputs prior, that would be a violation of the open meeting laws. So what we have done is the president has proposed something that is compliant and satisfactory to everybody. And I'm requesting that we approve that. And then there's an additional one where I have an additional paragraph that I would like to send to the Senate. Mr. Chair, oh, excuse hold, me. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I did oh, oh, not. I did. I did not you're, you're propose sure, anything. Sir, I have not acknowledged you. You provided well, input. Me then, please. Well, just a moment. You're, everybody's out of turn here. Are you, Trustee McKenzie? Are you done speaking? For now, yes. Thank you, President McClendon. I did not propose a policy, Trustee McKenzie. Uh, I I was asked by you to respond to a draft that you provided. In the context of providing the response to that draft, uh, I outlined to you the challenges that were in front of the board, uh, essentially of trying to uh, rush this through. And that's that, it, that the review that the administration gave you, provided you this morning, in no way circumvents the need to follow college policy on policy development, which includes review by college senate. So. Um, this is anything that this administration has done has been in reaction uh, to uh, the, the draft that you've, uh, I just don't want it to be out there that the board, that the college administration has proposed anything on this matter. Right. Uh, I'm going to read something. I was going to start the meeting off with this, but I think it's appropriate. But I do appreciate that you responded to the inquiry and gave us your guys' input. Again, as Trustee McKenzie has indicated, it was a very good response. I think you even indicated you felt there was a good effort put in on it. And there were some 
thoughtfulness done and it, it looks like a quality product. And I don't know if I can speak for everybody that, yeah, it's going to be agreeable and everything, but for what I've seen, it looks like something that can be accepted, but we'll get to that point. All right. I'm going to read this. It's easier to do it this way. And, I, and, and trustee Howard to you, you're right. We can't point for point. We can't go tit for tat. We can't go back and forth. This much of what I was going to say, I'm not going to say because I'm sure someone can rebut it and we can go back and forth to where someone's wearing a mask and where people aren't wearing masks and what's gone on in the world or locally and where we've seen masks or where we haven't seen masks. And you tell me, well, nobody has them at the fair or at the Nelly concert. I mean, we can go on and on and on with a million examples and, and you know, whose church has them or not. I'm not going to do that. So here's the overarching 10,000 foot that I think is true. And Everyone in this participatory governance model, NIC, wants a healthy and safe environment. Mass mandates, like lockdowns, are implemented with the best of intentions at heart. Sometimes it is appropriate to take preventative measures to ensure safety for the community. Vaccines and masks are available for those who choose them. Students and faculty have been given choices about the mode of instruction, online or in person. I would hope that we would choose, that let's not shame someone for their personal choice, whatever their decision. There is not an answer here that will please everyone, but we can give it a chance to move past this pandemic. Keep in mind that the Panhandle Health District does not have any mask mandates in place at this time. They do encourage people to wear masks and get one of the available shots if they are so inclined to do so. We must begin taking steps forward, but also remain vigilant and be ready to take additional steps when and if it becomes necessary. And I think, I would hope that's gonna be the general attitude of everybody here that we're trying to work this for the best of the college and for the best of the students. And I, I don't know at some point how you're gonna give me empirical data to tell me what the poll says. And so I guess we're gonna to have to use our best judgment and what we think is best individually as the elected officials, because uh, the vote that counted, I guess, was in November. And that's what we're gonna stand by at this point. So I'm not, I just want everybody to know though that we do care, we do want what's best. This is not designed to be uh, reckless in any way. There's just some times, and I'll use the military as an example. We have plans, we have backup plans, we have contingency plans. And quite frankly, especially overseas, when all heck breaks loose, you just get the mission done. But we still have a lot of plans in place. We try to follow those plans as much as we can, as often as we can. But it's kind of funny as the ops tempo goes up, most people aren't as interested about how good your haircut is or how well you salute or if you can march as well. So there's priorities. I see this as one of our priorities and I don't think it's unreasonable to look at this more quickly, to have a policy that we're going to address and vote on, it looks, it sounds like potentially, and then we can always come back if there's another policy that can be put through all of the processes and hoops. Mr. Chair. Trustee Wood. Thank you. Uh, just to go back to the trustee developing policy by themselves and passing it out to the trustees through email. I do believe that that was a violation of the open meeting law and I said so in my response back to both of you. you I Ron. agree with trustee Howard that the, that you aren't even considering process. You're, you're jumping through all kinds of established policies and procedures just to get to the decision you want to get to. We haven't had proper time to review anything or take proper input. And I, in particular, am not gonna go back and forth on some policy I haven't even read. If the three of you, two of you, one of you want to move forward and adopt some policy that we don't even know is legally vetted, our attorney has told us not to rush this, but you choose to ignore that, um, you, that's on you. I'm not gonna go back and forth line by line on this. If you choose to adopt something here, it's on you. Okay. Are there any more questions or statements? Do you have your hand up? Uh, Trustee McKenzie. I have intentionally re reviewed 2.0104, the governance policy for, for policies. And I firmly believe by updating this policy is resolving a tough spot that this board is in. And there's no easy choice. There's no right fully right answer. Some would say that we must adopt a policy and we had the opportunity and we did not and we're not complying with this uh, 
legislature who pro provides one third of our funding. So I do fully wish to respect them. I think it's fully within the best interest of this college to exp expedite updating our uh, communicable diseases policies, which was already in existence. I, I would add one comment. If a policy like this is being derived, <clears throat> working with the administration by a singular trustee, and then provided to the rest of us to review, edit, do whatever we want to do with it, chew on it, and then bring it to the meeting to discuss it, uh, a violation of the open meeting laws, it's, it's no similar than to review and for future context meeting. Uh, there's no inconsistency there. Mr. Chair, can I get a chance? Mr. Howard, Trustee Howard. Um, thank you for commenting on the open meeting law. <clears throat> the fact that we have material provided to us in advance of meetings, I think does not violate the open meeting law. And it has been a policy and a practice, quite frankly, amongst the trustees, that when two trustees talk to each other, that's not a violation of the open meeting law, because it takes a majority, it takes at least three, in order to invoke the protections of the open meeting law. So if somebody wants to call me and ask me about a policy and give me an opportunity to review it, that's not a violation of the open meeting law. And when I don't get any calls at all, then I feel like I'm being left out of the, the process. I apologize for that if that was well, the case. It's not an apology. It's just I, I want to get this done and I want it right. And I want to have an opportunity to do my job as a trustee. And my job as a trustee is not just hearing that somebody talked to Penn Dental Health or somebody did this. I want to have an open hearing where we can have people testify. We can have them come in and give us all the same information. So we walk away with the same kind of basis for making our decision and our vote. That's why I'm finding it difficult. I understand. And so the only communication I had from the Panhandle Health is what I shared with everybody after I first saw it. No, there was nothing else that I had other than what uh, Ms. Hoyer sent me. Just, Trustee Howard, I have a question for you. Trustee McKenzie, uh, appropriate question, please. Knowing that there's zero exemptions to the current operating procedure, would you prefer to hear that input after the students with learning disabilities and legitimate health concerns dropped from this university and lost a semester of their life? Is our mission not that important to them? Our we're shaping is, lives and we're, we're moving forward, people. Are you asking me a question or are you just making a statement? My question is done now. And your question is? Would you like to do that after they've dropped? Timing. I believe that's a question of timing, sir. Yeah. I don't know how many students, quite frankly, may drop because we don't have a mask mandate. That people that don't want to come on campus because we're not following protocol that will protect them. I don't know how many people there are in the different camps. You mentioned one anecdotal story, maybe two. I'm not going to make a decision on that. I have sympathy for people who can't come onto campus for a lot of reasons, quite frankly. And we can't accommodate everybody, not just in the COVID environment. So yes, do I have feelings and do I have compassion for those that can't come? Absolutely. But I still have an obligation to make sure that what we do on this campus is safe for as many people as possible. It's it Our safety protocols just all summer were safe. Just a moment. I want to make sure if anybody else has something, then I'll go back to you again. All right, Trustee McKenzie. Accreditation requirements also have come in the form of equity. Not everyone starts at the same start in life. People have different concerns in life. I don't know how we can just leave those students behind. I would still believe this um, institution would firmly still be safe. We are the only institution 
institution that I'm aware of in our county that is mandating it right now. The fair is going on. Sorry. Thank you. Um, all right. I think we've had quite a bit of discussion, maybe an adequate amount. Mr. Hope. Chairman. Trustee Barnes, please. The recent decision for the mask mandate, I think puts us severely out of step with the rest of our community. And it has created quite a firestorm, obviously, as, a, as an example of, of who's here. And as evidenced by our mailbox being flooded by many on both sides. In light of the new guidance or uh, decision from our state, I would like to move that we rescind the mask mandate until we can complete a policy that is appropriate. Can I make that motion? I don't think you've got the authority to do that yet. No. Under the existing, under the existing I'm, policy. I'm, I'm going to look for guidance because that may direct only, us then to make a motion on whether we're going to vote on the policy. Mark. I'm going to def Mr. Mr. Chairman, um, Trustee Barnes, that, that's been my concern is that it, it's been our interpretation over the last couple of years, and I think it's a proper interpretation that, that the decision uh, uh, for the, the protocols for the institution, for staff and students, the operation, including mask mandates, is an operating decision that is with the administration. And until the board passes a policy consistent with Idaho Code 332145. I don't think this board has the authority to, to make such an operating decision. Okay, on that, do I have a motion on policy 5.09? Trustee McKenzie. I believe that motion would be to ex um, expedite its acceptance. Uh, I make the motion to expedite the acceptance. He's got two motions. Mr. Chairman, if hold on, hold on. Actually, Michael did not make a motion. He asked if he could make a motion. My interpretation is he made an inquiry. We referred to Mr. Lyons for clarification if that was a, a proper motion. Mr. Lyons has said that is not a proper motion at this time because the board does not have that authority. So that motion was not made. It's a kind of a doesn't count, like it doesn't exist. So we step back again. And if, if Mr. Trustee Barnes wants to make that motion, someone prior to that would need to make a motion for approval, expedited approval of the policy revision one. We would have to have a vote on that. If that policy revision one does not pass, then uh, the motion would be moot. If it does pass, then Trustee Barnes could then properly make that motion, and then we could have a vote on that motion. May I? I make the motion to discuss and introduce this policy that I propose. Start the conversation. I don't, I don't think we have to have a motion for that. We can talk about it. That's what we're here for, so go ahead. May I have the floor then? Please, yes. Trustee McKenzie. The above paragraph, for everyone here to see, is nearly identical to the existing policy. There's a lot more red here, which I don't know why it's there, when if you compare the actual wording, the NIC administration may prevent, may take preventive measures to reduce the risk to the community. That's, that's existing there. So the only thing that's added is the notwithstanding any law or rule to the contrary, which is pretty simple and everyone should agree with that, and everyone should appreciate this comment because the laws, the emails and the laws clearly designate a con conflict right now. So the administration may, if, so if they're aware, if I'm, if they become, know that I'm aware right now with the communicable disease, I got tested and positive for COVID right now, you can take preventive measures. Or the administration, if the institution is notified by county, state, or federal health authorities, of a community health emergency. So it actually empowers the institution uh, more, more power 
by doing this. Uh, makes us more prepared for a pandemic that we've been in for a year and a half. The NIC administration, this is still the same, and may take preventive measures to reduce the risk to the community, including but not limited to, this is still all word for word, I don't know why this is highlighted, including to, but not limited to restricting access to campus resources, here's the new part, and or requiring adherence to prescribed protocols. That would be referring to maps. So it's nearly identical up here. It looks a lot more red, which I don't know why it is, but that's the part. It adds that part or in the really the pandemic context and adds adherence to prescribed protocols. So that, that's very, what I would say logical in the midst of a pandemic where our panhandle health has expressed a community health emergency that we're all in. Then the below paragraph, is pretty much verbatim based off of 33.21.45. And what it does is this bottom paragraph makes it so any of these communicable disease policies or prescribed protocols are therefore reviewable by the board of trustees. Reviewable meaning we would have the final ultimate authority as intended by the statute. So this is a very simple update from my perspective. Now, I, in the future, after people are done having their conversations and I've introduced this, I would like to make, I'm not making the motion, but I would like to make the motion that we expedite just this simple, simple addition. There is a, an additional one, which is this exact same simple thing that provides more reporting to the trustees and it helps in their assistance of the review. And I understand that's quite controversial of how much information trustees should be given with regards to public record laws or employee personnel records and um, that what we're, should, and I understand that and I respect that and I, I say we additionally send this whole piece and this addition up for comment to the Senate in the future, and then they get back to us at our next meeting. But in the timeliness right now, there's a very simple one, which even gives more authorities to respond to the Panhandle Health, because I haven't taken a test before I walked in here for COVID, so I don't know how people have become aware. Is statistics enough? Statistically, a lot of you here probably have COVID right now, which I'm glad you're wearing your mask. So, so wear your mask. This board of trustees, this is not a debate about mass efficacy. This is the debate about who gets the final say. And right now this college is out of compliance with statute 3321. So this simple addition update would bring us in compliance. That I'm open for the floor to discussion and thank you for the opportunity to introduce it. Okay. Mr. Chair. Trustee Wood. Well, I don't, that was just went on forever. I'm not sure what the motion was, but. Um, there's, there's been no motion at this time. All he chose to do at that point was just to discuss policy version revision one and what his intent to do with that is and, and what it speaks to and policy revision two what his intent to do with that and what it says and, and the process that he'd like to do with each of them. Yeah, well, it contained an awful lot of personal opinion. And again, I would just go back to process that I would caution the board to follow correct process, follow the advice of our legal counsel. Um, if you move forward on this, I do believe you'll be challenged legally without a doubt. And I don't think you're on solid ground. So again, I won't get into the back and forth about Trustee McKenzie's writings. I just don't think this is the right process at this point in time. All right, thank you. Trustee Howard. As I listen to some of the discussion, there seems to be a lot of weight being put on the, on the statute where it says the community college must adopt policy for measures. And that's what the statute says. I tell you, I've spent a lot of years of my life as a lawyer looking at statutes and looking at language. This does not say must within 30 days or must within 90 days 
or must within a year. It doesn't say when you should do it or how long it would take. It just says that we must do it. And I would agree, we must do it. What we should not do is rush this through. And that's what we're doing. And that's what my objection is. I have not had the opportunity to thoroughly review these proposals. I have some suggestions as I'm sitting here writing uh, on them, uh, but I wanna have an opportunity to think about it and to make some logical uh, discussion. So my objection is that th this is being rushed through uh, without any, any kind of um, obligation to, to rush it through. All right, thank you. All right. Um, I think we've had quite a bit of discussion here. Trustee McKenzie, are you desirous to make a motion at this time? Yes. I believe in adherence to our government's policies in good faith. I make the motion that we expedite the approval of policy 5.09 as revision one, the simple addition. And I guess that's with the proviso that the policy revision two will proceed through a more standard process after we have this emergency measure in place. Yes, I would make that motion after. Okay. All right, so your motion is to approve policy 5.09. That's listed as policy revision one. Mr. Chair, I believe he said expedite. I'm sorry. His exact words were expedite. May I, what wording should I do, Chair? Mark, do you have a suggestion on the proper word there, <laughs> sir? Uh, I think if you're going to move for approval of the, of the revision one to policy 5.09, you just make the motion to get board approval, uh, move for the board to approve vision, uh, revision one uh, amending um, policy 5.09. Trustee McKenzie, are you satisfied with that language? Yes, I make that motion to approve 5.09. Mr. Lyons, would you please note that is the appropriate language, sir? Thank you. All right, we have a motion that has been made. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second on the motion. We've had a lot of discussion. Do, do you need more? One more? All right. Trustee Hart. I'd like to make a privileged motion, and that is to table this matter. Second. It takes precedence over the existing motion. Which we can, we vote on that though. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. So on the privileged motion to table this, I'm not quite sure how to say that exactly properly. Um, Table this vote on approval of policy 5.09. Yes, to the next meeting. The next meeting, uh, which I'm not sure we have a date for. We have one on the 31st scheduled still, but uh, so I guess we'd have to talk about that. Um, okay, do we have any discussion on this motion? We have a motion and a second. Well, I think, uh, may I be a I think we have our answer from his trustee Howard that he would rather those students drop out. Oh, no, 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 let's not go there. Do you, <laughs> let's not go there. Do you, do you have a comment on the motion? Thank you. Let's all keep it civil here. Um, okay. So. So clarification, Mr. Chair. Fine, because I'm going to have one myself here, so go ahead. It's just a motion to table. No, no, sir. The problem for me, a clarification, is I'm not sure, we're sure when the next meeting is. We had, uh, no, I'm just talking, we're not, we're talking, but I'm going to do this. The next meeting is September 22nd, regular scheduled board meeting. And, and yes, sir, and I am aware of that. We currently have one on the docket for August 31st that has not yet been formally canceled. So if we refer this to the next meeting, the clarification would be what meeting date are you looking at? Is that your question, Trustee Barnes? Or do you have a different clarification? It might've been a clarification that would have been out of line, so go ahead. All right, thank you, sir. So in order to clarify the motion to table, I'm gonna make the motion Trustee to table until September 22nd. Just please. That give you 
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. We've had such a challenge with getting meetings together that we've been a little open ended on some of our dates have moved over different months. So the 31st uh, meeting has been publicly canceled. Okay, I hadn't seen that and it hadn't come off my calendar that I was aware of. And maybe it has. So if I missed that, Shannon, I'm sorry. The, when we sent the email was if we were able to accomplish everything today that we would take the 31st off the books to accommodate because Trustee Howard and his travel schedule felt that he could make one or the other, but he had other obligations, which we all do in our life. So I understand that. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a vote. Thank you for the clarification. We're gonna take a vote on the privilege motion to table to table the vote on policy 5.09 revision one. All those in favor of tabling the vote, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say nay. Nay. And chair votes nay. Uh, the motion is defeated by a three two vote. Back to the original motion which is for the approval of policy 5.09, revision one. All those in favor, please say aye. Well, hold on a second, we're done with the discussion? No. Well, Are sir, we've had a discussion? We've had dis we had discussion on it and then he made the privileged motion. Yeah, but you so, after you make the motion in the second, you got to have- Well, we did, we had discussion and then you made the privileged motion unless I missed that. We've had a lot of discussion. I thought all the trustees had the opportunity to speak. Well, I, I did. did, did, I, did have I did have one more. The call for the motion in the second. That's what I, I don't. I'm not sure if we did. We did. Okay. Typically, I thought we had some, but I couldn't remember when you were able to make your privileged motion. Okay. So, do we have additional um, discussion or comment on the vote for policy 5.09 revision one? So, Mr. Chair, Trustee Barnes, I, I would like to. Um, state uh, that I am in for doing this with uh, tonight because it does bring us in line with the understanding that we will do due diligence uh, looking at revision two and, and other guidelines. I think we just, we need to um, get this under control right away. So my understanding is that we're going to approve this with the understanding that we're going to then begin uh, work with revision two. Yes, sir, that is my understanding. Also, I believe Trustee McKenzie has indicated that he will have a follow-up motion after this one has been voted on. Are there any other comments? Yes. Hold on just a second. Well, Ms. Dr. McLennan first. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. I tried to keep track. Okay, sorry. Go ahead. Hi, uh, yes, Chair Banducci. Um, <clears throat> You're right. There's, there's been a lot of discussion on this, and I think uh, all the points are made, so I'm not going to circle back around on that. I just do want to state for the record that I am advising, the administration is advising the Board of Trustees to not pass this policy this evening without going through proper governance uh, procedures. If you do, and, and I'm not, this is, this is not a, a threat, or I'm just being descriptive of, of the future, um, you are beginning to write the first paragraph of the ad hoc report that's due to the Commission on Colleges and Universities on August 31st, and it will not be a favorable report if these are the actions, this is the action you take this evening. Mr. Chair. Trustee Wood. Uh, Dr. McLennan, just for clarification, could you once again state the proper process of policy development and all the steps that go into it? Christy. Todd. I'm I will, still speaking. You cannot oh, shush me. No, I wasn't trying to shush you, but I don't want to, I don't. And the, Todd, I'd like to hear the policy description. We've had that. No, settling. we have not. We Actually, have not talked about the steps of developing policy. Oh, I could have sworn that Mr. Lyon spoke to that. No, he did not. Dr. McLennan, would you please describe? Yes. Chair, may I make a privileged motion? What? Good Lord. Well, Christy. Todd, I have, I am speaking. I've asked Dr. McLennan to clarify the procedures for policy development. He could finish that and then trustee McKenzie can go off down his rabbit hole some more. I believe it's privilege. You know, we do need to remain civil if at all possible. Uh, that would be greatly appreciated. I, I don't believe anybody has yet has disparaged you this evening. So I would appreciate if you would do likewise. Um, Thank you. 
it's just common courtesy and nobody needs to be criticizing or condescending or, or use inflammatory words or criticism. Um, I'd like to doc, hear Dr. McLennan, if you would like to repeat the process uh, for <clears throat> Trustee Wood, if you would, sir. Thank you. I, uh, Trustee Wood, I hope I don't disappoint you. I don't have the procedures in front of me. So, and it's a fairly lengthy uh, and complicated process. Um, not as complicated, uh, complicated is probably not the right term. <laughs> Any, uh, whether faculty assembly, um, staff assembly, um, the administration, the board of trustees can propose a policy. Uh, what that does though, uh, what that triggers is a review process by constituent groups, uh, culminating with the review by the uh, college senate uh, that will ultimately is the recommending body uh, to the administration for the, for the actual policy itself. The administration reviews that policy. Um, I believe the staff or the fact or the Senate um, does that in a very deliberative uh, manner. They have uh, 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 typically a, a, a first reading and then a second reading and, and a vote uh, on, the, on the policy. Uh, when it is approved, uh, however it's been amended or, or if it comes back in its original format, then it comes to the uh, administration to actually to me as college president I work within my uh, my cabinet or other relevant stakeholders that have an interest in the policy to uh, uh, determine whether or not uh, it meets uh, my lens of uh, requirement for the policy. Uh, if I don't uh, agree with that, I confer with the uh, Senate chair and, uh, and, and may in fact move that back to the Senate for further deliberation or consideration. Once that process has gone through its course and there's agreement uh, on that uh, policy development uh, and that content, uh, then, uh, then I placed on the agenda for the Board of Trustees uh, as a first reading. And the board discusses it, the same process between the board and the administration happens in terms of a, a dialogue of uh, 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 elements that, that are uh, agreeable or some that may not be agreeable. Uh, and the, the board uh, may ask the administration to go back and address those concerns or issues uh, that, that, came, that came up during that initial discussion. Uh, and then we would bring that back with uh, those changes uh, for a second reading and possible action. If the administration does not agree with the Senate version of the uh, proposed policy and we cannot come to consensus uh, then both versions of the policies are forwarded to the Board of Trustees and the Senate has the opportunity to, um, uh, to make a case essentially for its version of the policy and I as college president would uh, 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 make the case for the, uh, the uh, version that the administration's uh, putting forward. Uh, in my tenure, we have not done that, I have not come to that um, uh, loggerhead, so to speak, uh, that all policy development has been uh, achieved consensus uh, and uh, has has gone uh, to the board uh, with that consensus. Are you aware of any of those steps taking place prior to this policy discussion tonight? Uh, well, no, there, we haven't done that. And that's the, the advice you. I'm trying to give this board is to step back into that uh, process in order to avoid any what could be very serious adverse impact by the Northwest Commission on colleges and universities. Thank you. May I say something? Trustee McKenzie. Everyone at this table is working in good faith. Everyone wants the betterment best for NIC. Everyone is entitled to what is their opinion on following proper procedure. We've had this conversation earlier. It clearly laid out with Mark that we do have, the board has the final authority over policy. And because of that, I make the motion that we approve revision one 5.09. Okay. Before I acknowledge the motion, I will say the definition of that process is I think if you had the word bureaucracy in the dictionary, it's got to be right next to it. Um, we have a motion on the table. Do I have a second? I have my second, correct? 
He's okay. acknowledging you second. This was acknowledging it. All right. You're not going to ask for the privileged motion, correct? It doesn't sound like it's needed. Okay, thank you. I believe we've had additional comment. Okay, I think we're there. All right. All those in favor of, of uh, approving policy number 5.09, revision one, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say nay. 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 Board chair votes aye. The policy 5.09, revision one, is approved by a three to two vote. Are there any other motions to be made at this time? Uh, I make the motion that we send policy revision two uh, for review um, through the um, to the Senate for policy input. Second. I have a I motion. A, I don't know that we need a motion for that. Mr. Chairman. We may not. We may not. You may be correct. Um, Mr. Lyons. Uh, this, this actual uh, re referral of this uh, draft to the board is, is not an action item uh, on the agenda. It, typically what happens is, is, is a board member will, will just ask that it, that it be referred and, and, and uh, okay. Uh, the trustee no, McKenzie agrees. Agrees. Oh, it's I'm usually sorry. a less formal process. Sorry, Mr. Lyons, I mean to interrupt you or anything else, sir. I'm sorry. No, I think that covers it. Apologize. I thought you'd stop. Trustee McKenzie, uh, would you like to refer policy 5.09 revision to, to President McLennan and um, the Senate for, uh, for review? To come I back? respectfully request that they initiate that process. Yes. All right. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Uh, one moment, sir. Mm -hmm. um, President McLennan, as you have the policy revision to, if you would please um, properly route and channel that through um, NIC for review. All right. Uh, May I say one more about that policy for submittal? Trustee McKenzie. Uh, for content for that first paragraph to the accreditation agencies, which we highly respect and are considering. Um, there was much more, a whole nother paragraph that we would love to have, I would love to have passed, but out of respect for the non-time essential portions, the, uh, is being referred. Trustee Barnes, sir. Um, in light of the passage of the uh, policy revision one, I would like to ask if we can move to have the mask mandate rescinded until we have had opportunity to completely review revision two to the established procedures. I have a motion. May I ask a question on the motion? That would be with the understanding that we would not probably have an opportunity to review that until the formal meeting in September, correct? If it got through everybody by that time, it could be September, or it could be October. Okay. All right, I have a motion on the floor. Um, Mr. Chair, do, I don't do, see that on the agenda. How do we take an action? on an item not on the agenda. Uh, action is mass mandate statement. That is certainly on the agenda and it is an action item. A statement? I have, I have not seen any of it. You didn't provide any of it. What is it that, this where's is the statement? It. My understanding is this is the mass mandate statement. The statement that, would be if either the mass mandate is in place or the mass mandate is rescinded. I Again, I would just say that I think that there will be several challenges and I would advise the board not to do this. 
If I may, Chair. Sure. Just a moment. Mr. Lyons, are you, did you get the wording from Trustee Barnes or do you need that repeated? I, I think Trustee Barnes made a motion to rescind the mask mandate. Okay. If that's, if, 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 so if somebody heard that differently, let's get clarification on that. Okay. On the, on the mask mandate statement, I think this is open to interpretation. Um, having passed the policy, there is, the, the board does have authority in this area. That's what it seems to me from this, um, from the, the, the immediate last action that the board has taken. So uh, I, I do recognize that the, that the action item mask mandate statement is not, is not very concise uh, and direct, um, but this is an area that would have uh, uh, board authority given the past action. Um, All right. Assuming that's, that's, that remains valid. All right, thank you, sir. I appreciate your explanation on that. All right, so I have a motion on the floor to rescind the current mask mandate. I second it. Further review. I have a second. Are there any questions or comments? Trustee Howard. Well, I understand that uh, masks on campus, masks generally in our community have become a touchstone of a lot of passion and feelings generated by different understandings. My difficulty with this motion is if you rescind the mask mandate, what can the administration do? Can they, if, if there are, as if there's an outbreak, can they uh, ask that people wear masks in the room, in the rooms or in the areas where there uh, is an outbreak? Um, to say that you're gonna rescind the mask mandate only opens the door to maybe the need for a lot of other remedial approaches, which um, may be all premature. I mean, we, we need to get to the end of a policy and see what the board's uh, uh, authority to the administration is before restricting just one portion of it. So I, I see this as being, as they say, the devils and the details, and the details are gonna be very devilish. All right, thank you, sir. Mr. Chair. Trustee Wood. Um, well, I would just like to state to our employees that you can probably see where this train's going. And I, I just wanna thank you for your dedication, trying to keep our students safe, trying to keep yourself state safe. And I certainly hope that you still will continue to wear your mask in the classroom, protect yourself, protect the students. Um, my belief is that this, this will be passed by three trustees and without a lot of um, real good conversation or, or input, and we're gonna to have to live with it for a little while. So I would ask all of you to just be safe and protect each other. Mr. Trustee. Please. It would have been interesting had we had this meeting at a later time, and more seats were filled, how many claps would have gone in both directions? I received so many emails that people are still at work today, four, five, six o'clock. So it's unusually early for us to have a meeting starting at three. So I'm glad we could have the community from NIC and some of the selected boosters come to clap today. Mr. Chairman, oh, um, Trustee Barnes. For those of you out there who um, are applauding, I understand and I, appreciate that sentiment. We have had a national, international discussion about mass and where we are. And this has been very difficult for me too. I had COVID last October and I'm still dealing with the after effects. And our nation, indeed our world, has been dealing with this for a long time. And we have to get back to normal. My decision for this should in no way be 
construed as I oppose anybody else wearing masks. If you believe that they are providing you protection and protection of others, that's fine. What I oppose is any government funded entity dictating to people what they can and cannot do with this regard. We need to all be adults and take appropriate measures to protect ourselves. And all this is doing is right now, getting us in line with the state code that it is the responsibility of this board to determine what we do to address contagious or infectious diseases. So I encourage you to wear them if you believe that that's what's gonna help, but don't shun and don't mock and don't uh, demean those who choose not to. I am one who chooses not to, and I won't because it restricts my oxygen so severely that within 30 seconds, I'm about to pass out. And I'm not contagious. So I want, want you to all to know, and to anybody else who's listening to this, I read every single one of the emails that come in, and I appreciate everything that everybody has said on both sides. So thank you. Thank you, Trustee Barnes. Thank you, Chair. One moment, thank you, sir. To that point, whether a, for myself personally, whether an email came in, whichever side is supported, I will tell you I've read every word. And there are impassioned emails on both sides of the argument, as you might expect and imagine. And there are, some of them are very short, some of them are very to the point, uh, some of them are a little blunt. Uh, some are quite lengthy and tell a story or a narrative. And so uh, to what Michael just said, I, I do read all of them. And uh, so I, I appreciate those that felt compelled to communicate with the board and ex express your opinion and your thoughts on it. And I, I wish everybody the best as we work through this. I really do. This has been a very challenging couple years. Trustee Howard. Thank you. Um, with all due respect, I'm going to say something that I'm not being disrespectful of you. But when you say that you object to government or authorities dictating what we should do, I suggest to you that we are in a civilized society replete with laws telling us what we should and should not do many times for the benefit of others, not necessarily for ourselves. We're told that we shouldn't run red lights. We're told that we should obey traffic laws. We're told that there are a replete number of uh, activities that we should or should not do to protect others. In my mind, this is no different than that. We are trying to protect an entire community by using the, the minimal uh, device of a mask. I say that in the context that, as I understand it, there's an uptick in cases in Idaho because of the COVID, not just in Idaho, but around the country. We're having um, another wave of um, COVID infections and deaths, and we need to do something to address it. And so in my mind, this is a device, minimal as it may be, by which we can try and protect one another and act as a civilized society. Mr. Chairman, may I respond? Yes, sir. And then uh, Trustee McKenzie, if you'd hold on for a moment. Uh, Trustee Barnes, please, sir. Uh, I appreciate that clarification because I do know that there are laws that are uh, restrict what we can do. That, that this is a very difficult situation. As we all know, this is a, a major debate internationally on the of mass itself. And this really points more towards what uh, governing authorities can tell us to do related to our own personal health. And we need to get back to normal as soon as possible. Trustee McKenzie. Well, I think it's evident that while you must, as in a mandate, you must wear a mask in this building, 
you are not afforded the opportunity of when to put that mask on in this building. May you put it on in the middle of the building. May you put it on your way out of this building. So when the statute says we must pass a policy, are we allowed to pass that four months from now, 10 months from now, 10 years from now? I, I see your point. I, I think we've discussed the timeline issue and I think it'd be fair to say there are some differences of opinion on that, so. Well, I, I refer to that as in the recommend, this does not change anything, really. The recommendations to still wear your mask and the safety protocols at this institution are premier, fully compliant with Panhandle Health and other Kootenai Health partners. It is still there and we still highly recommend the same thing. The difference is mandated. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. Chair. Yes, Christy. Where is that recommendation? Trustee McKenzie is speaking of, he says we have a recommendation. Where is that? <clears throat> I was basing it off of the signs I see around. Is, is that not? The, the safety protocols, that ad adherence, the, am I mistaken to not understand that this institution does not suggest everyone wear a mask? I think you were speaking on behalf of the board. The board's not had that discussion. Oh, well, forgive me for conveying that message. All right, I'm gonna stop that one right there, if I may. Uh, I just appreciate both your inputs. I just um, don't want us to go back and forth on that. Just decorum. All right. Um, just a moment, sir. We've had so much discussion. I think we're still. There's a motion. We have a motion and we have a second. We're in the discussion of that. Sir. Can I call for the vote or where did you address? Well, you can call for the question. I call otherwise. for the question. Okay. We have a call for the. May I speak? One moment, sir. Mark, under Robert's rules for orders, if we call for the question, if it's unanimous, right. you can just call for the vote. Otherwise, you can take a vote to call for the question to ask for the vote. And that turns off any more comment or discussion. Oh, correct. Mr. Chairman, um, Robert's rules of order are, are not required here. They are listed in our policy for, for meeting governance as, as a guideline. So we tend to follow Robert rules of order because it gives some structure to this. Um, you, you, you allow comment. So if you, if you, as chairman, if you think uh, some additional comment should be allowed, I think you have the flexibility to do that. Uh, we don't do always strict technical interpretation of Robert rules of order. Trustee McKenzie has called for the question. Are you really just, not going to allow the president to speak? Well, Christy, you know, while I appreciate your input, let, 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 let me recognize you next time. And I'll be happy to chat with you for the moment here. Here's the challenge is a couple, three times. I thought maybe we had concluded our comments and discussion and we, we keep going, which is okay. But there's a point of when do we stop? I, I guess maybe we haven't reached that point. I'm not sure. So um, I was, so polite, yes, I was I will, politely waiting my turn. And to I'm speak. going to, and I'm going to let you, sir. Uh, let me finish. So Christy, yeah, I, I'm going to allow the, certainly give the president the option to speak. Thank you, Todd. Thank you. President McConnell. Okay. Uh, you know, I, I, I too can see where this is going. I, I've obviously known that for some time uh, based on this discussion. I, I, I do want the board, I, I'm very disappointed uh, with some qualification in this board right now. I'm, I'm frankly dismayed by uh, this, this, this action that you're about to take. However, I want you to know, and, and tr chair, or Trustee Woods, I do, Wood, I do appreciate your uh, comments to the faculty and staff at North Idaho College. You know, when this pandemic started, uh, it was uh, it was a challenge for us to figure out how to find our way forward. And as a college community, and by college community, I mean trustees, 
certainly administration, faculty, staff, and most importantly, students. Uh, I can't think of one individual who did not rise to the occasion uh, to pull in the same direction to make sure we could offer uh, the, the highest level access uh, to our community, to the programs and services that we provide and to do it as safely as we possibly could. So I, I too wanna, we had t-shirts printed last year, together we will. Uh, I wrote it just recently, together we did. We were able to operate this institution quite safely. The actions that the board is contemplating and, and taking right now, uh, Trustee McKenzie, uh, do change things. It will have the effect of changing things. Um, I want to briefly read a, a letter that I received from Kootenai Health uh, yesterday, in fact. Uh, the trustees have received this, but I do want to read it for a matter of public record. I, you know, I'm going to stop know, here. I'm gonna, hold, on, Health, hold on, hold on, hold on. We, me. you know, this is. Todd, it does no harm. I've certainly listened to all your comments this evening. You know, yes, you have. And all the trustees have received that letter. I haven't. It would be in your email, sir. It could it would, be. I haven't it would, received it. It would be in two different places. Because it's not in two different places. Well, well, no, it would be. It would be in your NIC address. And it would be in your I looked at my own address. personal address today. I looked at my uh, NIC address yesterday. In that, I apologize. Because what I sent, I know, but I didn't send that for well, that would have come from President and Shannon. So maybe they only said it's your NIC email. That I, I can't I can't speak to it. I didn't review the email addresses that it all went to. I just saw everybody's name on there. Todd, I don't think you want to give the impression of restricting comment by the president. That, that's fine, Christy. I just find it interesting that you're going to bring up a letter. And I question, did those folks just wake up that morning and go, you know, I think we're going to generate this letter today and send it to NIC just because it just, it just came to us to do this today. We've been doing this for over a year. There was different mass mandates in the fall of last year, the spring of this year. And now just the amazing timing of this, just coincidental, it's just serendipity that all of a sudden this email pops up with this letter right before our meeting. Todd, you understand you're questioning the motivations of a major health partner in the region. Why I, are you actually, questioning? Actually, I, I do, Christy, on this one. Todd. I do. I think there's been a lot of things done behind the scenes. Todd, And I think there's yourself. a lot of orchestration of the things that go on. And I think this is just an example of it. Just another one. And that's fine. That's it's just a lot of pieces in this puzzle. And everybody has their position staked out. And they're doing what they can for their advocacy. And this was just an, another attempt in that advocacy on one side of the of the ledger here of, of this issue. I think and I just think it's a bit disingenuous. Well, first off, we don't normally get input from the crowd and there is no public comment today. So please keep your comments to yourself or security can escort you out. Feel free to jump <laughs> out right now and say something if you want to leave. Secondly, it's not, this is a letter, which I've seen, and that's great. And it's, a, oh gosh, we think you're great. We're going to commend you. So fine. If, if that's what you need to hear to further your narrative, to, to reinforce oh your position, God. that's what it does. So that's fine. <laughs> and and if you voted for me, raise your hand, because I bet there won't be God, anybody there. stop, please. Chairman. Well, it's just the point. It's, Chairman, you, there's a very, there's a very, uh, you know, Chairman, obvious Dugy. bent here. Again, sir, you are talking out of order. You're not permitted to talk. Chair sir. Banducci. If you would. Thank you. Chair Banducci. Well, it is. Just a moment. Read the letter. I, I, I will say uh, before I before I read the letter, um, it was very timely. And it, I'm, I'm absolutely certain uh, that it was timely because of this this board meeting this evening. And Kootenai Health is Kootenai Health is a major uh, partner in our community, and we are an anchor institution in this community. And what we do has a direct impact on this community, and not the least of which is the transmission of communicable disease. The letter begins. Thank you for your support. As you know, Kootenai Health has experienced another wave of admissions to our emergency room and hospital from increasing COVID-19 infections in our community. 
On August 18th, 2021, Kootenai Health sent a press release out to our community to notify them of our situation. Today, we have 96 patients admitted to the hospital with 37 admitted to our intensive care unit, exceeding our licensed ICU capacity of 26 beds. Gratefully, due to the federal and state waivers, we have been able to continue to care for our community by in innovating staffing models, utilizing travelers, creating additional space for care, to care for patients, pausing elective procedures, and reducing non-urgent services. However, as we all know, resources at some point at some point are finite. The press release was meant to call to action to our, as a call to action to our community to help us flatten the curve, thus avoiding a crisis and allowing Kootenai Health to continue to serve all the healthcare needs of our community. Our community can make a difference by employing such actions as getting vaccinated, wearing a mask, and maintaining physical distance. We know by employing these simple actions, every individual can help. As one of our key business partners, we wanted to express to you what your positive impact to your announcement to have your students return to school wearing masks made on the team at Kootenai Health. Our physicians, nurses, and entire healthcare team applaud you and your decision to stand with us as leaders in our community to do the right thing. Together, we share a commitment to keep our community healthy and safe. We have a stake in our community and its continued well being and appreciate your support to be able to remain available to serve should they need our services. And that's signed by Joan M. Simon, Chief Nursing Officer, and Karen Cable, Cabal, Chief Physician Executive. And I just, I also, I also just want to mention that, that the impact that, that this decision is going to have, um, you know, people will be on campus, they'll be in offices, they'll be in, in classrooms uh, without face coverings, uh, that, that is um, uh, certainty. Uh, the, the phone calls and the notes that I've received from many in our campus community and just the verbal comments that I've made, made as I've walked around campus the first today the first few days of the semester have shown overwhelming support for the mask requirement. If the board, and I, again, I think I know where this is going, chooses to do something different, you are, you, are, you are sending a very clear message to this college community that the board does not put the health and welfare of its faculty, staff, and students uh, at front of mind, that you're telling them you do not care. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Trustee Barnes. Keep in mind that we're just dealing with the mandate. The Panhandle Health District, if you recall a year and a half ago, got itself into some pretty hot water with the community because they were unelected officials making laws carrying with it fines and jail time. The community rose up and we got that changed because they were unelected officials. What we're doing here is doing the same thing. The state has said the elected officials need to make these decisions. You hold us responsible who were elected for this. Now there are overwhelming numbers of people on the other side too. You hear people talk about your own, you're listening to your own echo chamber. I kind of love that analogy. We all have our, have our echo chambers. So this gets handled at the election. You can hold me responsible when I'm up for re-election. But we're talking about a mandate of something a medical device that has no guidelines of how to use it, how to dispose of it. And it's clear in our national and international discussions of whether the masks are even effective. If you believe they're effective, good, wear them. We're just addressing a mandate. We want our college to be open and free. As an adult, you can take responsibility for your own health, for your kids' health, and do what is necessary for that. But we don't want to be dictating 
to people against their free will related to their own health. And so I, this letter I've, doesn't mean a whole lot to me coming from ha Panhandle Health. I'm sorry. Jesus. Trustee McKenzie, did you still want to call for the question? <laughs> I would like to say one more thing in closing. We're just going back and forth and back and forth. And back and forth. Well, I do, I do have one more comment, Trust, Trustee Banducci. Okay. Trustee McKenzie was ready, sir. Trustee McKenzie. The, in Idaho, the Idaho legislature, which again provides about one third of our funding, widely recognizes that voting constituents want community college board of trustees who are elected representatives to make this specific tough decision. Each of us come from the community and we're actually in tune with our community and with the NIC stakeholders and community here, even though Anyway, apparently they believe that five fiduciaries with diverse experiences concluding this decision may actually provide more wisdom on the situation than a single person, even if highly educated. Trustee Howard. I guess I, I do want this to end, um, but I would like to remind all of us what the statute 332145 says. It says a community college must adopt a policy for measures and procedures, listen to this, to prevent the spread of contagious or infectious disease. I'll say it again, to prevent the spread of contagious or infectious disease. Taking away masks, which are intended to prevent the contagious or infectious disease is not a, the kind of uh, procedure or measure that is authorized by the statute. The statute then goes on to say that once a policy has been adopted, which we've done tonight, only the board of trustees has the authority to close the college or any of its buildings or to require other methods, methods, measures in the college for, again, listen, the purpose of preventing the spread of contagious or infectious disease. I have heard no medical evidence other than some arguments, quite frankly, that masks do anything but prevent the spread of contagious or infectious disease. The, the, this statute authorizes us as a board to, do, to take actions which prevent the spread of, not to, not to enhance the spread of. Thank you. I, just one brief comment, Chair Venducci. Very brief. President McClendon. I just want to say that uh, uh, all these, all things considered, if 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 the administration of this college has made the wrong decision about requiring face coverings. Um, we've inconvenienced uh, folks. Uh, they, nobody likes wearing them. We, we understand that. And yes, we have uh, had very few, but a few uh, students that have not been able to uh, access our programs and services because of that requirement. That's not, I don't like that and nobody feels good about that. The numbers are very small. If you, if, if you are right, however, by taking away the mask mandate, um, the outcome is obviously very, possibly very much more dire and people may die as a result of it. So I just, I really hope you keep that in perspective because this thing matters. I'll call for the question. Go ahead, sir. I call for the question. Thank you. Trustee Howard has called for the question. We'll, uh, Can we do a roll call vote? Well, yes. I think, Mr. We, Chairman, we, uh, you do not need a roll call vote. Um, there, there was a motion made. I can't recall exactly by who. I think it was Trustee Barnes, and there was a second, I think, by Trustee McKenzie. Yes, uh, sir, I believe you're correct. And so this is not the type of motion that re requires a roll call vote, but I would 
Okay. Yes, that we make sure we have an accurate count. Yes, sir. Uh, that was what I was thinking. Thank you for confirming that. I was trying to remember my Robert Rose orders on the call to question. All those in favor of rescinding the current mask mandate on campus, please say aye. 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 Those voting against the rescission of the current mask mandate on campus, please vote nay. 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 The chair votes aye. The mask mandate rescission is approved on a three to two vote. And the mask mandate has been removed at this time. I believe that's all we have. Can I correct that, sir? You said the uh, mask mandate statement has been approved at this time. I take the correction. That is all we have right now for the open session. Do I have a motion to go into executive session? Mr. Chairman, may I, may I before you comment, before you um, ask for that motion? Mr. Lyons. So if, if, just for the uh, members of the public, if this board goes into executive session, which I assume it will, uh, we will move to a different room for the executive session. I don't know how long that will last. There, if for anybody that is planning on sticking around, uh, there there is a, a potential return to open uh, session and, and new business. If the executive when the executive session ends, the board will be returning to this room. But I'm informed by some of the staff that if when that happens, there will have to be a 15 minute recess so that they can set up the equipment and get ready for the, the Zoom uh, and all that. So I just wanted you to know if the board comes out of executive session and you're still here, you're probably gonna have to wait another 15, 10 to 20 minutes, something like that. So just, just informational. Mr. Lyons, thank you very much for uh, informing everybody of the situation so everybody could be aware of it and plan accordingly. Do I have a motion to go into executive session? I make the motion. I have a motion by Trustee McKenzie to go into executive session. You got to state the basis. Yeah. Yes. So uh, and, uh, let me state it. I, I, as I understand, the motion would be to go into executive session uh, pursuant to Idaho Code 74-206-1B to consider the evaluation dismissal disciplining of or hear complaints or charges against a public officer, employee, staff member, individual agent, or a public school st a student that's actually that's actually right out of the statute but that's the motion that you would make is that the motion that you're making uh, trustee mckenzie can we add that okay we'll no. just stick, we'll just stick just with that say yes <laughs> yes you you're just right say answer. say so moved is, is so how moved you. okay so we have a motion on the floor proper motion do i have a second to that motion Second. I have a second on the motion. Mr. Chair, discussion? We can have discussion on the motion, yes. Thank you. Um, this, as I told you in email, I opposed you moving up the discussion on the president's contract to this date. You've moved it up about a week early and I don't think it's appropriate. And I am opposed to moving into executive session. Your opposition is noted. We've actually delayed this. We should have had this discussion in June. We went through July. We've now gone through August. We are not now having the meeting on August 31st. As I indicated to you, having lost that meeting opportunity, which I suspected would happen, that would put us into what was that, September 22nd, I believe. I'd have to look again. Uh, these are actions that we're already a couple, three months behind, and it's appropriate that we address them. So I uh, am comfortable with having this on the agenda tonight. Uh, again, we're overdue to address it already. And we've all had time to think about it. In fact, we've already had an hour in executive session. I think it was at least an hour where we've already started to discuss this topic. So this is actually a continuance or a furthering of, of a discussion that we've already began in executive session. So I, I think it's timely that we address it. Again, we're actually overdue. 
Um, any other comments or questions? All right. All those in favor of adjourning? Mr. Chairman, this one calls for a roll call vote. I'll, I'll ask for the roll if oh. that's okay with you. No, that's fine, sir. Please. Okay. Trustee Wood? I'm here. That, that's either yes or no. Yeah. Here. Yes. No. Yes. Hey, are you voting? Oh, are, are you no. Voting? I don't want to go into executive session. Okay. Trustee Wood votes no for executive session. Trustee McKenzie? Yes. I want to. Trustee Howard? No. Trustee Barnes? Yes. And Trustee Banducci? I vote yes. Okay, so Mr. Chairman, here's the situation we are. We cannot have executive session because the executive session law requires a two thirds vote of the governing body. Two thirds vote for this five member board requires four votes to go into executive session. So the motion fails. Chair. Trustee I'm, Howard. I move we adjourn. Second. Any comments on that motion? I have comments. Trustee McKenzie. I. Feel we need a. When we had conversations on August 4th, Trustee Wood asked for more time. You've had your more time. And it seems to me um, that I'm lost for words. Mr. Chair, we've had a motion and it's been defeated. That's true, but we haven't actually adjourned the meeting Correct. and we have not adjourned to executive session. So I believe I'm still allowed to provide yep. opportunity for trustees to ask questions, comments, well, make additional motions. I guess I make the motion that I we- have, I have not adjourned the meeting. As far as I know, I haven't hit the gavel yet. Sure. Mr. Chair, I say that we uh, take action then um, on the rest of the agenda items that are in open session. Mr. Chairman, you have a pending motion to adjourn that has to be dealt with first. Okay. So I have a motion and a second to adjourn. Okay. All those in favor of adjourning at this time, say aye. 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 All those in the favor of adjourning. Aye. In favor of not adjourning at this time, please say nay. 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 So we're gonna stay in open session. I make the motion that we uh, take action on the rest of the agenda items then, based off. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, you don't need a motion to take action on, on the rest of the agenda, we just move forward to it. We're, we're, we're just in the agenda now. The motion to adjourn that was made earlier is failed. So we're, we're still in the meeting, open, the open meeting. We do not have executive session. That is correct. Very disappointed at the gamesmanship regarding not going into executive session. We had provided additional time. We tried to set the meeting dates. We tried to accommodate. I have not, again, seen the notification that we canceled on the 31st, and I don't know that my calendar has been updated. So I think at my next opportunity, I'm going to check and see where we're at. I'm not sure whether that's been publicly noted, noticed. 
or I'm tempted to try to uh, hold us to that date uh, until I've seen it formally or where it's at. I don't think it's come in through mine that I'm aware of. Right. And I have not authorized it to be canceled. If you look at the email that I sent and acquiescing to Trustee Howard and adjusting to Thursday the 26th for the date, I believe I phrased it in the way that if we're able to accomplish everything that we have intended to by moving up the meeting to Thursday the 26th, then we would consider canceling the meeting currently scheduled for August 31st. And I believe that's how I phrased it. I don't have my exact email, but I'm pretty darn sure that's pretty darn close. So I don't think I gave any direction as board chair to cancel that meeting at this time. So we'll go forward in this. And right now, uh, 831 is still a valid date. All right, we're in the next section of the item. The next is uh, new business. Uh, we'll skip the Schuler Performing Arts Center, reconvene open session, call to order and verification of quorum because we never went into executive session. The next item on the list is new business. It's action, it's president's contract. Uh, Mr. Lyons, I believe you have the floor. Mr. Chairman, um, every year the board considers approving a contract renewal for the president. Uh, the president's contract is, is, is a three-year term, but is re typically reviewed and renewed annually by the board uh, with amendments where, the, where appropriate where the in the board's discretion. Um, so this is up, I had mentioned this to the board, uh, I think uh, the last time when we were going forward with this, this, uh, mo this uh, uh, item was tabled, um, but it is now back before you on the agenda. So this is up to the board to uh, review the contract as an agenda item and, and, uh, and make a decision as to whether uh, you will, what, what action the board will take with respect to the president's contract, whether renewal, whether um, maintaining, or anything else you might do with respect to the contract. Mr. Chair, I make a motion to renew the president's contract, uh, maintaining the current benefits and taking into exception the um, cost of living increase that was afforded to all the other employees on campus. I second the motion. We have a motion on the floor and to approve the contract renewal. The current terms to include the uh, inflation adjustment, Nicola. The step increase. And I'm aware that I'm getting there. And we also, uh, motion by Trustee Wood, we have a second to that motion by Trustee Howard, do we have any comments or discussion, please? Mr. Chair, discussion? Trustee Wood. Uh, I'd like to review with the board the, the accomplishments of uh, Dr. McLennan since we never got the opportunity in the last session to formally go through his evaluation as is required by every 12 months. I'd just like to state that in his COVID-19 response, he made principled decisions and he maintained full operations. He developed a high level of trust among faculty and staff. Um, NIC is viewed in the community as having gotten it right. In his institutional planning and effectiveness, he activated and aligned institutional planning with uh, IT and enrollment and management in our master plans. He instituted a strategic plan, engaged the entire campus in these, event, in these efforts. These efforts are guiding all the decisions that are related to budgeting and resource allocation. With the accreditation and mission fulfillment, we completed a successful self-study in our seven-year cycle. We received five commendations. There is strong evidence in the past year of institutional health and leadership prior to the last accreditation uh, complaint. He successfully led through complete difficult personnel issues, developed a, a cabinet and a truly high-performing team. NIC is recognized statewide for the depth of its leadership uh, reach. Dr. McKinnon, or McLennan is the longest serving college president among all Idaho's um, community college presidents. In our athletic department, he addressed leadership and coaching challenges. He successfully addressed 
the issues that led to the NWAC sanctions, or the re resolution of the NWAC sanctions. In under um, innovation and entrepreneurship, he developed um, Headland as a hub for a diverse array of programs and services. We got national recognition in 2018 as the Entrepreneurial College of the Year. We have garnered several gifts and grants to build and sustain our vision. With fiscal oversight and sustainability, we're one of the five NWCCU with accommodations. It was one of our accommodations. Uh, we developed a three-year budget outlook on process that provides in incredibly useful data on potential long-term impact of year-to-year -year budget decisions. We adapted a significant budget. We adapted to significant budget challenges without reducing impact to students and community. Under resource development, the foundation assets have increased approximately 33% over the past five years. We received the largest gift in the college's history, substantial competitive grant success, local, state, and federal. Uh, he is uh, actively engaged in donor development and fundraising and commits 25% of his time to our foundation and their development efforts. And finally, under community engagement, he's highly visible in our community, actively creates and matures relationships of strategic value to the college. He's recognized as a leader with community interests first of mind. And he's highly respected by business and industry leaders. I um, certainly think Dr. McLennan has earned the trust of this board with uh, his many, many accomplishments. And I look forward to a renewal of his contract. Mr. Chair. Trustee Howard. Um, I guess I'd like to add to what Trustee Wood uh, just uh, reviewed with regard to the performance of Dr. McLennan and his, his um, um, outstanding leadership of the, I've heard from staff, faculty, community members about Dr. McLennan's performance in carrying out his duties as president and his obligations toward the community and the college. I received a lot of commendations, in fact, um, of his performance, of people congratulating him to me on his performance with regard to COVID as well as helping to maintain the viability of NIC during the most difficult time of the COVID um, pandemic. In fact, we recently received from the faculty assembly and staff assembly, the following memo. The faculty assembly and staff assembly of North Idaho College have confidence in the leadership of President Rick McLennan, support his operational authority and appreciate his demonstrated commitment to NIC's mission, vision and values. Dr. McLennan is a champion of educational opportunity and an ambassador for entrepreneurship in North Idaho. Over the last 18 months, he has led the campus community in successfully navigating a number of challenges while maintaining our focus on educational excellence and student success. Under his leadership, NIC responded to COVID-19 with resilience and creativity as it continued to offer students safe, high quality educational opportunities through a variety of instructional modalities. It also received an exemplary accreditation review in the spring of 2020 and responded successfully to the accreditation complaint that was initiated in the spring of 2021. Faculty and staff assemblies appreciate the Board of Trustees ongoing commitment to address the issues raised by the NWCCU regarding the accreditation and eligibility requirement nine and ask the board prioritize, ask that the board prioritize North Idaho College's operational stability and campus morale by renewing Dr. McLennan's contract. Mark, Mr. Lyons, we've been going for two hours and 10 minutes. May I, uh, suggest it's appropriate that we take a uh, maybe a five minute break i think i'm allowed to do that during an open meeting am i not you can ask for a recess we have a pending motion uh, i understand that do i need it well it's, this is this is board chair like i said we the, the, these are guidance issues so um 
Uh, I don't I don't know that there's any prohibition on that. you you have you have some latitude to run the meeting. So I think it's so Mr. Chair, why would we take a break when we have a pending motion? I was just gonna make that motion, Christy. I would love a bathroom break. But we have a pending motion. Well, actually, I, I have a question. Uh, I have a couple things I'm thinking about. I'd like to discuss with Mr. Lyons, actually, too. I, I need uh, need some guidance. And then uh, it's something I probably need to talk to him one-on-one -on -one, because regarding personnel. So um, I guess I don't understand, Mr. Chair. But I do think that the bathroom thought is what was probably the overriding thought for the moment. It feels like you're purposely May delaying my motion. motion. It feels like you're purposely delaying my motion. May I make a privileged motion? Yeah. Well, sure, why not? What's your privileged motion? Trustee Howard had one. Well, there's only certain privileged motions. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> well, educate me. I, I, I may, it, well, educate may. me how they work then. No, no, you may no, have one. No, no, what, what is your motion, Trustee McKenzie? I additionally have a question that I would love to ask Mr. Lyons out of respect for him one-on-one -on -one individually to make my trusteeship more effective. And I, I would love a bathroom break. This is a live so, meeting and I don't, we don't take breaks for you to have one-on-one -on -one conference with our leader. You're legal able counsel. to slip mark notes during it, Christy. I handed him the policy. That was the note. A policy. I, I have a motion on the table. I call for the question. Just for the record, if I may, uh, none of the trustees have given me any other extraneous information. Uh, Trustee Wood did have a copy of the policy on policies, which I did not, and I borrowed it from her to review it. That's, that, that was the paper that passed between us. There was nothing extraneous. Okay. So we're still back to. She called for the question. She did call for the question. Yes. Okay. Well, I guess I have a question or a comment. I guess I'm just going to ask the question in regards to personnel issues. They're handled within the HR system up through the chain of command as appropriate. The only employee that's a little bit out of that normal cycle is the president, which rises to board level action. And my understanding is when we do the evaluation, which we have not yet completed, which is what was this? One of the items on the agenda for this executive session that that is done in executive session amongst the trustees and then discussed with the president. Mr. Chairman, let me interrupt here before. It would not be appropriate to do a, a, an employee evaluation in an open session. Oh, no, I'm let not me going just to. say that. No, no, I'm not going to at all, sir. I'm just trying to think what's appropriate this is my question so i'm just gonna ask it because the president is unique as uh, in his employment status at the college we do the evaluations in executive session i guess the question is is, is are all decisions regarding the president's employment other than just the one public vote on his contract are those all done in executive session or are any of those done in open session or can they be discussed in open session or do they have to be during the board of trustees meeting? It's always been interesting because we've never really uh, addressed what the rules are of that way. I'm just trying to understand it. Mr. Chairman, if you're asking me, um, evaluation of an employee is not appropriate in, op in an open session and I would recommend strongly against it. You have a pending motion uh, to renew a contract, and that, that, that's really what's before you on this one. So, okay. You, you still have a responsibility by policy to do an evaluation, but again, that evaluation apparently will have to be done at some other time. Correct. 
Okay. Hmm. All right. Are there any more comments or questions on the pending motion? We haven't done a roll call or taken a vote regarding the call for the question. So I'm, I'm asking that. If not, we will go to the vote. Okay. The motion on the table is to renew the president's contract for the rollover of the third year. Uh, the motion has been. I, I make a privileged motion oh, that we table this till the next board meeting three days from now on the 31st. No, Christy, I, you've asked for us to table things too. So I, I guess to Mr. Lyons, is that a, is, is that a privileged Con motion? Con is that something Mr. Mr. Chairman, take? consistent with this board's practice as I've observed it, that would be an appropriate privilege motion. They are, they are limited as I understand. I don't claim to be a scholar on Robert's Rules of Order, but I think that that is a motion that, that we, we have entertained in the past. And uh, you know that is one that, that will, if made and seconded, would have to be voted on up or down. And then we would know whether or not we, we go forward with the pending motion. Thank you, Mr. Lyons. Been a lot to consider tonight, hasn't there? Uh, Trustee McKenzie, if you would like to make your motion based on Mr. Lyons' opinion of that. I do so make the motion that we table uh, President's, well, yeah, President's contract for uh, August 31st. Yeah, you could have. Uh, Mr. Chair, you could have just adjourned the meeting. Well, okay, then I, I withdraw mine. Do you well, want to I'll, withdraw your motion and I adjourn the meeting and we reconvene on the next meeting on August 31st, Trustee Wood? No, on the 31st. Well, we haven't canceled it, Ken. That's what I have scheduled is August 31st is the next it's meeting. Been publicly canceled. When and where and how and who did? Well, it's been by done whose, by whose authorization? Well, it takes three people to call another special session. Again, I'll, I will ask the question: When and how was that publicly canceled, and under whose authorization? Because I don't I'm think not we... mistaken, as the chairman of this board that authorization would have come from me to cancel that meeting. Well, Todd, I don't know um, what you conveyed to our board clerk. We don't have that information, but what we do know is that earlier tonight, you stated you wanted all five board members at such an important meeting. So I would hope you would make accommodations for all five board members. You know, that was, that is what I said, and that is true. And I have tried to do that, and, and it's been an interesting, it's been an interesting exercise in trying to schedule these meetings over the June, July, August timeframe, and soon to be September, with very limited opportunities. And I have tried to defer and do that. However, with the postponement of a portion of the agenda tonight, unexpected postponement or postponement or avoidance of it, I guess that changes my perspective on that. I, I, I guess I didn't appreciate uh, the game. Todd, we have there. the right to vote how we choose to you vote. Do. And, you and know so what? to no, say no, it's- No, no, we're not gonna do this. We're not okay, do this. thank you. We have we, a right to we vote. Have the, we have the right to vote. I as chair have rights and responsibilities. Well, and you're not also. king. Well, I didn't say I was. I must have missed that memo that I sent out that said I was king. I can read uh, your email if you would like. Please read my email. At the very bottom, you list the agenda for this meeting. Please retain the August 31 meeting date as well. Thank you, Todd. Read the whole thing. August 21 at 318 p.m. President McLennan and Shannon, as board chair, I have been contacted by Trustee McKenzie and he has requested that a special session be held as soon as possible. 
Trustee Barnes has indicated that he supports this special session and is willing to attend in person without a mask or virtually if necessary. Trustee McKenzie has been in contact with Trustee Howard, who is in New Mexico, and he has also reached out to Trustee Wood, who didn't take my call. Both Greg and Michael have indicated availability any day this coming week with the sooner the better. Per Greg, Ken has said he would return to attend a meeting as he would prefer to attend in person versus virtually, but would like confirmation of said meeting ASAP to arrange travel. I am not currently aware of Christy's status, but I've left her a voicemail to make her aware of this email and to please call me about her schedule. I am supportive of this special session and available Monday 823 if possible, Tuesday 824 second option, and Thursday 826 third option. Pending schedules, notice, posting requirements, and facility availability. The policies being implemented, implemented on Monday at NIC are a hot topic in the community with citizens reaching out and contacting us trustees. They are asking questions, seeking information, and expressing their opinions on the situation. The requested discussion at the special session should help to address at least some of these inquiries. Already having the availability of myself, Greg, and Michael, please coordinate with Christy and Ken for their date preference and have the agenda include the below items as requested by Greg and with Michael's concurrence. Open session, Mark Lyons, explaining how authority for mask mandate is within President McLennan's authority. Maybe some sort of really change that. So open session, action, policy 5.09 amended. Open session, action, vote on NSE mask mandate statement. Executive session, discussion, president's contract. Open session, action, president's contract. Please retain the August 31 meeting date as well. Thank you, Todd. Mr. Chairman, may I remind the chair that, that the issue for discussion is, is the pending motion. Um, I think you brought up, we don't have an action item to set a meeting, but um, let's, let, let's try, let's stay focused on, on where, where, what we're doing with the motion. I have discussion. Trustee McKenzie. I believe it'd be appropriate if we voted for the call on the question and if it were to pass or fail, that would be, and then I have a follow on motion relation to, related to the contract. If I may, which motion are you referring to? Trustee Wood's motion or your privilege motion that you made? I am willing to uh, retract my privilege motion in, um, because I believe if we vote on the president's contract and if it goes positive or negative, so, so be it. And then I have another motion relating to the president's contract. The privilege motion did not have a chair, so I believe it can be withdrawn. Thank you. You're at least correct in my recollection. No one had seconded as of yet. It was still in the discussion stage. I'm still, since we have been in this discussion, and maybe I, I don't need to go any further, but I'm still trying to figure out what our meeting schedule is going to look like and where we're at um, as we've had these motions and what we're taking up and when we're going to take it up. Since we just read my email and how I did everything, I was not aware that our August 31st meeting had been canceled. There was a subsequent email between you and I dealing with the, this meeting and my requesting that we not have two of them. And you told me that we wouldn't. Only it was conditional. I'm just saying there was a subsequent email. There was, but it was it was conditional. So if we're going to read emails, we could read that one too. Please do. I have them all. He's got um, them all. I called for the question about 15 minutes ago. You know that's happened a couple times tonight, and I think the last time we got called from this end, we never got there either. In deference to everybody having discussion and input and questions, so and comments. So I'm going to e treat that equally on both sides of the tables. I'm going to give you a great equal weight on that one because. He called for the question and we never got there either. And as Robert's rules of orders is a guide for us, but not our standard that we have to adhere to, I'm gonna use some um, discretion here. And if Greg wants to pull up the other email, since Trustee Howard did specifically reference it, well, that would be fine. Because I just want everybody to be clear. I have not necessary to well, deal with but, this motion. But I have, I have it right here. Per I've communicated clearly and I feel like I built misaligned there. Good it's okay. Go ahead. Trust, Trustee McKenzie, if you have it. Okay. Uh, so the email that I just read before, 
was sent Saturday, August 21 at 3.18 p.m. You can public records always request too, by the way. Perfect. Saturday, Maybe. August 21, 4.30 p.m. Trustees, I cannot be available until after Wednesday. I tried to rearrange my schedule, but couldn't. I will be on the road and not available until late Wednesday. I would concede to a Thursday meeting on the condition that the meeting set for the 31st is canceled. I am trying to rearrange my commitments and I can't do both. Please let me know as soon as you can so I can make adjustments to my commitments. Ken. Okay, says Todd. This is on Sunday, the following day at 1.30. Okay, based on Ken's email below and conversations with Ken and Christy today, just got off the phone with her a bit ago, parentheses. Let's schedule the meeting for Thursday, August 26th at 3 p.m., 1500 military time. Location still to be determined, but there, there will be no public comment. Greg has been looking at the policy and has created a draft. It will be distributed in advance for review. Please look at it and be prepared to discuss it on the 26th. That will be the time for edits to finalize it in a workable manner for now. Per Ken's request, if holding this meeting and addressing the agenda below should negate the need, I'll read this again, per Ken's request, if holding this meeting, if holding this meeting and addressing the agenda below should negate the need for a meeting on the 31st, the 31st session will be canceled. See all of you this Thursday. Enjoy the rest of the Sunday. It's just Todd. So I, I interpret this as we would see how the meeting goes and it should not be canceled. Mr. Chair, it's quite clear one of our trustees has told you they have a conflict. I think the prudent thing to do is try to work with your full board of trustees. If it can't be on the 31st, it could be moved to sometime in September or stuck at our regular board meeting. I'm not sure why we're belaboring this. Trustee McKenzie has, or Howard has a conflict and I think you should honor that. I think we're tired of the games. Well, uh, I don't need that, please. And I don't need to go back and forth. You, Trust, Trustee Wood, you know, I, I appreciate that. I, I'm just going to say it. I'm not trying to go back and forth. I'm not trying to whatever, but ironic, but you're the one that actually on a couple of occasions over the last couple of months has encouraged me to move forward with the meeting as long as we have a quorum, even if all five people could not be physically present. You, you specifically have done that a couple of times. So for you now to tell me that I can't do that or I shouldn't do that unless I can get all five people there. I'm in sure person. it was a minor issue when, that I well, was speaking no, of. No, actually it hasn't been. Every one of these agendas has been loaded. I, no, at no point would I suggest we make a decision on the president's contract without the full board okay, of well, trustees. I won't go back and forth with you. That's what he says. Well, she you said. really, really, Todd. Stop right there, please. Keep your decorum. But we just, we don't need to go back and forth. Neither of us. <coughs> we do have a motion pending. I, we do. We do. So the question is, are we having a meeting on the 31st? If we have a meeting on the 31st, then I could see where this motion and, and we could vote or we could table or we could do some things. If there's no motion on the 31st, then we're not till September 22nd. And I think that changes the paradigm. It's completely inappropriate for you to try to maneuver around a motion that I have called the question on. And that is exactly what you're trying to do. If you would like to adjourn, as was earlier suggested, then have somebody overrule my motion. But you, you are maneuvering and it's just so inappropriate. I would like to overrule that motion then. Well, you have to make a motion. I make the motion that we overrule Christie's motion. Well, that's not exactly well, how you state it. How do I say oh, it oh, then, oh, Mr. Hold Lyons? Hold on, <laughs> hold, hold. If, you, if you two would, just, just a moment, please. No, I'll have a motion well, after. Yes, sir, that's true. But. All right. All right. All right. Receiving some counsel from a former board chair with a man with a lot of wisdom. Um, the suggestion is that we go ahead with an address. 
the motion, uh, unless Greg, you're compelled to do your privilege motion. Otherwise, Christy's got a motion on the floor, we can vote on it. And then we're gonna have to address back um, for the meeting, which- I have a motion to override Christy's motion and replace it with another one. How do I do that, Mr. Lyons? Uh, you can't. Mr. Chair, I don't, I, 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 I don't think that that would be an appropriate thing to do with a pending motion. Privilege motions would be, would be limited to, to um, something along the lines of, of uh, tabling the motion to, to, to a future date okay. or to the next meeting or something like that. But you can't, you can't have a privilege motion just to make another motion that is unrelated or, or, or goes to the substance. Mm -hmm. Unrelated or goes to the substance. My, can I make my privilege motion and motion what I want to that we vote on? Because um, it's directly related to the substance. No, I, I, Mr. Chair, I, I think that's the problem. We have a pending motion. If you want to make a motion that goes direct to the substance, I don't think that's appropriate while there's a pending motion. If you, if you want to table the issue, the, the motion, uh, then we could do that and vote on whether it's going to be tabled or, or heard. That's my understanding, and I would, I would uh, uh, get input from uh, uh, Trustee Howard on that if he has a different view of it. Okay. Well, go ahead, sir. Yeah, I I think Mr. Lyons is exactly right. We have to do one of two things. Deal directly with the motion that's before us with a second, or if there's a motion to table it, then to deal with that because it, it can be, it's a priority. Those are our options. Okay. May I ask a sidebar question of you, Mr. Lyons, for a, a ruling on something on the agenda itself as we move forward? Would we be able to address? the timing of our next meeting, but it's not specifically called out as an agenda item on here. Yeah. Because we do set those meetings. So what's our flexibility on that? Well, the, the, the setting, setting- If I the, adjourn, then I don't have this option. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Setting the next motion or the, the, the next hearing would be done on under the, under the policy for setting the next, the next uh, meeting. So I don't think you need to do that here, but you can discuss availability and that sort of thing. If, if this motion gets tabled, that's the end of business. The next action on the agenda would be adjournment. Um, we, we, you, you, and, and, then, and then see when, who's available and when, when for meeting times. I don't think you, if the meeting has been canceled or been vacated, I think it has to be reset. Because it wasn't set by board motion. It was set by the process under the policy for setting meetings. So if it's not currently on the schedule, you go back to the policy and 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 get a meeting established the way you would normally do that. Okay. So is there a motion to table? That's what I was about to inquire. I was just processing through this for a moment. Um, Trustee McKenzie, do you desire to proceed with the existing motion that's on the table with the second? Or do you desire to use the privilege motion to try to table the existing motion on the I think I'll second. do the privilege motion to we'll table it to the next opportunity the Board of Trustees can make a table motion. Okay. Okay, so we have a privilege motion on the table to table Trustee Wood's motion that was seconded by Trustee Howard. Do I have a second for Trustee McKenzie's 
Privileged motion. Second. Okay, I have a second on the privileged motion. I believe we take a vote on the privileged motion first. Correct, if the privileged motion passes, then the pending motion, the original motion is tabled to the next meeting. Okay. All those in favor of the privilege motion put forth by Trustee McKenzie and seconded by Trustee Barnes to table Trustee Woods motion to vote on the president's contract and seconded by Trustee Howard. Please say aye. That is to postpone it, to approve the privilege motion and vote aye. To, to approve the privilege motion. I vote aye. Aye. All those opposed, please say nay. 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 The board chair will vote aye. The privilege motion passes on a 3-2 vote. We will table the vote on the president's contract to the next meeting. Are you going to table the motion that's pending? No. Table the motion. Right. Yes, sir. Okay. Table the motion to the next meeting, okay. which should come after the executive session that would have been held prior to the open session. All right. Mr. Lyons, is there anything that precludes me from adjourning this meeting at this time? I don't believe so. I declare this meeting adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.